Let's go ahead and build a slightly more complex AWS Lambda function here that accepts a Wikipedia uh, entry, let's say uh, Google or Facebook or Amazon or Netflix, some company, and summarizes the content of the text. So the way this works is uh, import JSON here, import Wikipedia, and this particular Lambda function does all the work. And you can see here that uh, I use this library Wikipedia summary after I grab the name of the company that will be summarized. Uh, and I say I wanna look at one sentence from Wikipedia and then I return back the response. So pretty straightforward uh, function here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a new one inside of this directory. So I'm gonna type in salmonit to get started. Uh, this will go through and ask me, you know, what uh, source would I like to use? I'm gonna go through and say one, uh, a quick start template. Uh, I'll go through and say, I want to create an image uh, artifact. Uh, and then for my base installation here, I'm going to choose Amazon Python 3.8 base, so number four. And then for the project name here, I'm going to call this uh, Wikipedia uh, 2021. There we go. All right, so it's cloning the template. Well, what do we want to build here? Do I want to build Hello World, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, XGBoost? Let's go ahead and use the uh, Hello World Lambda image inference uh, start here. And then uh, looks like I'm ready to go if I go into this directory. So I'm gonna go into this directory here that was created. You can see here it's called Wikipedia uh, 2021. And in the beginning here, you'll see that it created this Hello World directory. And all I need to do is double click this file and I need to just swap this out with my existing code sample that I have here, which is in this AWS Lambda directory. So I'll go ahead and copy this and swap this out into this location. There we go. Uh, looks like we're ready to go here. And uh, what's great about this uh, process here is it's really straightforward to test things out. And how do we know how I can test things out? Well, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this requirements file here if you notice here, there's a Docker file, there's a requirements file. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a, the Wikipedia library, right? And then in order to test it, I'm gonna create a virtual environment. So I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna first change into this directory. So let's go ahead and get in there first and go into the hello world directory. And notice this is where that requirements file is. So I'm gonna say uh, first Python 3, and we'll say dash M, V, E, and V. So I'm gonna create a virtual environment. I like to put them inside my home directory in a dot directory uh, so that they're hidden and they're far away and they're not gonna accidentally get checked into a project. And I call it something similar to what I'm creating. So we'll just call this wiki. There we go. Uh, I'll go ahead and source this. So I'll go source tilde slash dot wiki, bin activate. And then once I've got this set up, I can do pip install. So I can type in pip install dash r uh, requirements, right? And this will go through and look at these two uh, requirements files and kind of get this thing uh, cranking. Now, if I look at the readme, notice that it gives me the instructions about, you know, really how to get started here. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna say sam build, right? So if I go into this uh, directory here, I can type in sam build and this will, uh, show me that, uh oh, I need to be up one level above, uh, not in the actual Lambda directory. I need to be in the template directory. So we'll go and run sam build again. I'll cd up one. And now from here, I'm in the right directory. It's going to build out this containerized version of uh, my application. And then uh, what I can do is actually test this out. So I can actually go through here and say sam local invoke. And this will allow me to uh, invoke this function. And notice that it says, uh oh, you know, you didn't give me uh, the correct payload. Uh, so, you know, what can I do here to, to kind of get this thing working? Well, uh, there's a couple ways we could test this. Uh, we could either do SAM local, or uh, if you remember from our other project, you can also uh, give it the ability to run locally in foreground mode. So there's, there's a couple, really a couple different ways that you can get this thing to, to be invoked or you also can give it a JSON payload. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, basically go inside of here and I'm going to put a JSON payload uh, here. So I'm gonna to say touch um, 
and we'll call this payload.json like this. And then I'm gonna edit this payload and I'm gonna tell it that I want the words entity inside of here. Uh, and then we'll put in, let's say for example, Google, right? That looks pretty good. And then if I look at the SAM local invoke, so SAM invoke and I do help, that should, let's do dash H for help. This should give me, um, oh, sorry, SAM local help. So let's go to SAM local uh, invoke dash H. And it tells me the different commands that I can run. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. We can see SAM local invoke. Here we go. This is what I want is I want this event here. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, SAM local invoke dash uh, payload.json. So let's go ahead and try that. SAM local invoke um, dash e payload.json. Let's see what happens. And it looks like um, it's close, but we have some kind of an error here. So let's go ahead and try this to be Amazon. Let's go ahead and try that. There we go. So you can see that, um, or uh, another one would be um, Twitter. We could try that. That might be a better name here. There we go. So you can see that uh, when I was able to invoke this with uh, Twitter, uh, it was able to tell me that, uh, in fact, uh, this is the first line here. So a lot of times when you're first debugging something, you may need to try a different, couple of different payloads and kind of play around with it a little bit and, and really get a feel for you know, how things work. Now, one little trick that I'll point out here that could be helpful is if I do IPython and uh, uh, try to install here, notice that it says it's in a virtual environment. So I can do a pip install of it. So, and that will put it in my virtual environment. And then what I can do is I can actually use this as a REPL. So I'll type in IPython and then I'll say import Wikipedia, right? And then I could say Wikipedia dot summarize or summary and put in the word Google. And you should see similar problems like, uh oh, it, does, it doesn't match that. But what about Twitter? Does it match? the word Twitter, and it looks like it does, right? And that's why we're able to get this um, summary. So this is a great way to also debug things uh, is to kind of play around with what it would look like from a terminal window. So really we're, we're pretty close here to being able to test this out and deploy it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, again, you know, look at this readme file here that the deploy and it says that do a SAM deploy guided. Great, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and deploy this. What do we want to call this? We'll call this Wiki uh, 2021. And then we'll say US uh, region East, perfect uh, repository for where we want to put this. So I'm going to go over to ECR real quick and I'm going to um, make a repository where I could put this inside. Um, let's go ahead and just, uh, you know, maybe, maybe put a new one together real quick. We'll just call this one wiki make that easy go ahead and create this repo uh, select it which will allow me to select the uri and then go back and then we'll go ahead and paste that in there we go sure we want to deploy and just go through and follow the rest of the prompt this looks good this looks good this looks good great it's now building the container and pushing that container to the Amazon uh, container registry, and then also putting this thing into production. So this will be a full uh, web service that will accept a payload that will, will be a JSON payload, and I can test it many different ways. And this is really the power of this Cloud9 based deployment is that I can build this you know, invocation locally, test it out, play around with it, build little tools that talk to it, plus, in, in, invoke it remotely as well 
And once this thing is deployed, uh, I'll show the, the ways that we can go into this and actually test this out. So this will take just a second here. And then what I'm gonna do while this is finishing up the deploy is I'm gonna spin up the uh, console for Lambda and find this thing, which should be appearing uh, any second now. So once this thing is pushed, it's gonna say, waiting for the change set to be created. Great, we can kind of make this a little bit bigger. You can see all the different stuff that it's doing. Uh, and then it's gonna say, great, previewing, do we wanna do this? We do. Let's go ahead and say yes. By the way, this is the guided deploy. That's why it's prompting me step-by-step step to do this. Now it's gonna create the API gateway. It's also going to de deploy the right uh, IAM role. Uh, and then it's going to put this thing into our production environment. And so once we see this in production environment, you'll see that, here we go, the creation is in process, it's creating it. And we can probably see this as it's getting created if we refresh, there we go, right? So already, this thing is created nine seconds ago and it'll start updating it uh, as it's being created, right? So we can kind of see it in real time that the, the window will be completed. There we go. Uh, and it looks like, it, again, it's, it's working here. And then when it's done, uh, what will happen is, there we go, we can, we can invoke this function uh, remotely. So let's go ahead and refresh this thing real quick. And, and basically, in order to invoke it, um, all I would need to do is go to test right here and put in a test payload. In this case, we would say, you know, wiki, go through and um, put in, you know, entity, and we'll put in Google, and then this will allow us to invoke this, and we should get the same response, right? It says, oh yeah, it, didn't, it doesn't like Google, so we're gonna try Twitter right and we can put twitter here and it is able to invoke twitter successfully there we go and it see twitter is an american microblogging social network perfect uh and then again you can see here that this stack has been created here's my you know production endpoint here and so what we can also do now that it's been deployed is if i go back to this aws environment and i go down to lambda we can look at this last uh, deployment here which is wiki we can scroll here, and if I right-click on it, that I can right-click, go one more time, don't show again. Um, if I right-click on this thing, that we should be able to say invoke on AWS, and then this will allow me to also uh, put in a payload that's similar to what I did uh, remotely. So I can type in, you know, uh, entity here, for example. Here we go, entity, and then do um, Twitter and let's see what happens and we can see that I'm able to do that invocation there we go and, we, and it's able to invoke it remotely in fact we can double check this by trying some other uh, name here like for example um, I don't know Pinterest or, or um, let, let's go ahead and uh, double check what the name is of Pinterest real quick Pinterest okay I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there here we go, let's try that. Whoops, Pinterest, tourists. Let's try this, invoke it, and there we go. It found a new, a new website name, perfect. And then if I go back to my uh, environment here and I go to the monitor, we should be able to look at the, the logs and verify that my Cloud9 environment was invoking this function. And let's scroll down, there we go. Pinterest is American image sharing site. So really this is a, a round trip feedback loop where you can rapidly develop applications using uh, this SAM based system with Python. You can deploy it in a production manner, repeatable manner. And maybe the next step would be to put this into a system like AWS CodeBuild and do continuous delivery.